Woman confronts Trump. What he does next is unbelievable. In the vibrant city of Silverwood, amidst a heated political rally, a significant confrontation unfolded that would capture the attention of the nation. The figures at the center of this dramatic encounter were Donald Trump, a political figure known for his controversial policies and outspoken nature, and Eliza Martinez, an emerging advocate for women's rights and a fierce lawyer. Eliza Martinez, with a background steeped in legal defense and activism, had long been a vocal champion for gender equality and women's health. Her activism wasn't limited to the courtroom. It spanned across national debates and grassroots campaigns. Known in certain circles for her tenacity and deep commitment to justice, she found herself drawn to the rally that day, intent on questioning Trump, whose stance on women's issues had been consistently criticized as insufficient and often derogatory. Donald Trump on this day was riding the high waves of his latest policy proposals, which had sparked widespread debate across the political spectrum. His supporters saw him as a no-nonsense reformer who dared to say what many thought but feared to voice, while his detractors viewed him as a divisive figure threatening to deepen societal rifts. As Trump's oratory echoed through the crowded venue, Eliza navigated through the throng of supporters and protesters, her determination solidifying with each step. The atmosphere was electric, a mix of anticipation and contention. As banners fluttered and opposing chants melded into a cacophony of political fervor, the defining moment arriving during the Q&A segment, Eliza's voice, resonant and unwavering, pierced through the hubbub. Mr. Trump, your policies and public statements do not seem to support the advancement of women, she declared, her tone both calm and authoritative. How do you plan to actively support women's rights and address critical health issues facing them today? Trump, visibly taken aback by the direct challenge, masked his surprise with a quick smirk that did little to hide his irritation. Well, let me tell you something, he began, his voice booming over the crowd. I have tremendous respect for women. I've employed thousands of women in top positions across my businesses, long before it was a popular thing to do so. He went on to list examples where he claimed to have empowered women, citing the appointment of female executives in his companies and his donations to women's charities. His response, while polished, was largely seen as a deflection from the specific issues Eliza had raised. Eliza prepared for such responses pressed further. Respectfully, Mr. Trump, she interjected, her voice firm amidst a mixture of boos and cheers from the crowd, employment is not the equivalent of supporting women's rights. What about your recent comments that many found dismissive towards women and your policies on reproductive health that many believe are regressive? The tension escalated as the crowd fell into a hushed silence, sensing the gravity of the exchange. Trump's initial composure wavered, but he quickly regained his stance. Look, I believe in protecting our women, taking care of them, he retorted, employing his familiar tactic of using personal anecdotes. My mother was a great woman, and I was raised to respect and cherish women. I will do more for women's health than has ever been done before. His answers were typical of his style, vague promises and personal reflections that skirted the pressing issues at hand. But Eliza was undeterred. Promises are not policies, she shot back. We need concrete actions, measurable changes, not just platitudes. As the debate intensified, Trump, perhaps in an attempt to deflect criticism or genuinely intrigued by Eliza's tenacity, made an unexpected proposition. Why don't you come and work with me? Help me craft these policies you're so passionate about. If you think you can do better, come and show me. The offer stunned the audience and even Eliza herself presenting an unexpected turn that blended both a challenge and an opportunity. Eliza, after a brief contemplative pause, responded with a poise that resonated through the crowd. It's not about individual achievements, she stated clearly. It's about collective progress, about genuine commitment to change, not just for photo opportunities, but for real lasting impact. The rally ended with no clear resolution, leaving the crowd polarized. Some praised Trump for extending an olive branch, interpreting it as a sign of openness to dialogue. Others saw it as a mere tactic to silence a powerful critic. Eliza, for her part, emerged as a significant figure, 
a new voice for women's rights who had not only stood up to Trump, but had also articulated a clear vision for meaningful change. In the days following, the confrontation was dissected across various media platforms. Trump's campaign attempted to leverage the incident, spinning it as evidence of his willingness to engage with dissenting voices. Conversely, Eliza received a surge in support, becoming a sought-after speaker and a symbol of resistance against political rhetoric that many felt marginalized critical issues. The encounter at Silverwood's rally thus became more than just a heated debate. It evolved into a pivotal moment in the broader discourse on gender politics in America. For Eliza Martinez, it was a continuation of her lifelong battle for justice and equality. For Donald Trump, it represented a public challenge that could shape the narrative of his political engagements moving forward. As the nation watched and debated, the dialogue around women's rights was invigorated by the clash of these two formidable personalities. The day at Silverwood had glinted more than just political debate. It had sparked a movement, underlying the power and impact of steadfast advocacy and the unpredictable dynamics of political engagement. The aftermath of the rally in Silverwood rippled far beyond the confines of the venue, its echoes reaching corners of society where the debate over gender equality and women's rights continued to simmer. The encounter between Donald Trump and Eliza Martinez had not only sparked a media frenzy, but it also ignited discussions in academic circles, among policymakers, and within community groups, all dissecting the implications of their public confrontation. In the days that followed, editorial op-eds dissected every aspect of the debate. Feminist scholars analyzed Eliza's arguments, using them as case studies in gender study courses. Political analysts speculated on the impact this public scrutiny might have on Trump's policies and public image. Meanwhile, grassroots organizations rallied around Eliza's bold stance, organizing forums and workshops inspired by her call for concrete action. Eliza, riding the wave of newfound recognition, took her advocacy to new heights. She was invited to speak at universities, on television shows, and at international conferences. Each platform gave her a chance to expand on her vision for a truly inclusive policymaking process that prioritized women's rights at its core. Her message was clear. Meaningful change required persistent advocacy, informed dialogue, and an unyielding commitment to dismantle systemic inequalities. At the same time, Trump's team strategized on how to convert this challenging situation into an advantageous one. They organized interviews where Trump could clarify his stance on women's issues, attempting to soften his image by highlighting initiatives and planned policies aimed at benefiting women economically and socially. However, the public remained skeptical, craving not just reassurances but visible commitments and implementations. The dialogue catalyzed by the rally also penetrated corporate boardrooms, prompting companies to evaluate their policies on gender equality and inclusion. Eliza's relentless questioning and Trump's defensive responses had laid bare the often superficial nature of corporate commitments to gender issues, inspiring some companies to adopt more robust and actionable strategies. Moreover, the encounter inspired a series of documentaries and a surge in social media campaigns focusing on women's rights. These campaigns utilized clips from the rally to highlight the urgency of addressing gender disparity in politics and business, galvanizing a younger audience to join the cause and use their voices in innovative ways. Community leaders and activists drew upon the energy of the rally to organize more localized events aimed at empowering women at the grassroots level. Workshops on legal rights, health, and political participation were set up many of which cited Eliza's arguments as a foundational backbone for their curricula. The impact of the rally was also felt in legislative circles, where a few forward-thinking lawmakers began drafting bills that addressed some of the very issues Eliza had raised. These proposed laws focused on improving health care access for women, enforcing stricter penalties for workplace discrimination, and increasing funding for women-led businesses. As weeks turned into months, the encounter at the Silverwood Rally transformed from a singular event into a sustained movement. For Eliza, it was a profound affirmation of her life's work, 
propelling her deeper into the national spotlight as a formidable advocate for women's rights. For Trump, it became a reflective mirror, presenting challenges and opportunities to redefine his approach to one of the most pressing issues of his campaign. The discourse that emerged from Silverwood was a testament to the power of vocal advocacy against entrenched political figures. It reminded the public of the critical role they play in demanding accountability and championing the cause of equality. Eliza and Trump, in their respective roles, continued to influence the national conversation about gender politics, each shaping the narrative in ways that would have lasting effects on the political landscape. The Silverwood rally, though just one day in the long fight for gender equality, had indeed sparked a broader movement, illustrating how a moment of confrontation could evolve into a catalyst for widespread change.